Today's video will be a brief overview of permission for files and directories on Linux system and how you can change it with the chmod command. When we run the ls l command in our directory, we can see all the files and directories inside it with the corresponding permissions. The permission part is the last nine characters of the string here. Each section of three consecutive characters is permission for each class from the owner to group to others. The three permissions are respectively read, write, and execute, and a hyphen denotes the lack of a specific permission of those three. When we talk about permission, there are two things to consider. Number one is class, which answers the question of who is accessing our files and folders. There are three classes, owner, group, and others. Owner is the one who created the file or folder, but of course you can change ownership. Look for chown command on how to deal with that. Group is a collection of users with shared permissions to the system. Similarly, a ch group command is available for changing groups. Others are other users in the system that doesn't categorized as one of the two above. The second point is the actual permission itself, or what can each of the above classes do with the files or folders? Well, it works differently for files and directories. Read or R for short is for reading the content, whether from files or directory. Write or W for short is for changing the content, still for files and directory. Execute, or X for short, is for running files like shell script and executable, or providing access when it comes to directory. Without execute permission, you are unable to use comments that access the folder, such as the CD command, or read it with LS. You can't travel to the folder that requires passing through this directory. Thus, you cannot create a new file in a folder without execute permission, even if you do have write mode enabled. As you can see, the behaviors of folders without execute permissions are really strange, so this permission should be available most of the time. Now let's talk about changing the permission with the chmod command. The general syntax is like this, and there are two modes of working, symbolic and numeric. The symbolic mode uses the shortened letter representing the classes and permissions we previously discussed. For example, this myfile.txt assumes all permissions for each class. This following command grants read and write permission for the owner, removes execution permission for group, and others can only read. There is also numeric mode to achieve this, which has to do with octal values provided by this illustration. Here I'm allowing all permission for owner, only write and execute permission for groups, and no permission at all for others. The corresponding number is 730. Therefore, if you have seen the famous CH mod 777, now you know that it gives full permission to everyone. The CH mod command also allows you to use other options, but's that beyond the scope of this video. You can find all these options on the man page of the command. And as always, thanks for watching.